the last few weeks I've done uh, a couple of videos talking about um, in essence how to apologize uh, so in this video I thought it was useful to talk about how to receive an apology because that is a really important part of how we communicate um, especially when it comes to our interactions and our relationships with others as well um, so obviously a lot of this advice isn't with the knowledge of what the apology is about for you um, or what context it's in for you or anything like that and it's also without the knowledge of how you might feel about all of these things as well uh, about what happened to you or whether you are willing to accept the apology. So let's look at it in the context of you want to continue this relationship, whatever kind of relationship it is, you want to continue it. So let's assume that you want to continue it um, and someone who you feel has done you wrong in some way or who has just screwed up in some way because who doesn't? We're human, right? Um, comes and apologizes to you and let's say that they apologized in a in a really useful way like um, as per previous videos um, don't feel like you need to say it's okay um, or it's all right or any iteration of that uh, what that does is it invalidates the there's a couple of things that it does it invalidates the person giving the apology it's kind of being like oh there's no need it's fine um and we're talking again in the instance where an apology is warranted not for the one where people will apologize for nothing or it genuinely is okay um but the ones where uh you invalid it invalidates their their apology and their role in it but what it also does is it just crushes down your personal boundaries like nothing else. And it says to them subconsciously most of the time that, oh, it's okay for you to treat me poorly, or it's okay for you to behave poorly, or it's okay. Like, so when you say, oh, it's okay, you're actually saying, oh, your behavior was fine. Please do it again. And I'm pretty sure that most of the time it's not fine and most of the time you don't want them to do it again um, and most of the time it is usually around your boundaries or what is a fair way for someone to say speak to you or treat you or whatever it is about right so we never want to diminish our own power by saying that it is okay for someone to for example, treat us poorly in whatever way that they have treated us poorly or speak to us poorly or whatever it is, right? So we never want to say, oh, it's okay, especially if we don't mean it. And this is a really challenging thing, what we can say instead in how we receive apologies, just like when we receive compliments, for example, it can be really challenging to receive an apology and not jump straight to the, oh, it's okay, because we're trying to kind of just get through the uncomfortable moment and get through the uncomfortable conversation. Um, I understand that feeling. I know I talk a lot about communication, but also I spend a lot, um, not a lot of my time, but when it comes up, I spend a lot of the time um, <laughs> when it comes to challenging conversations, kind of trying to rally myself to actually have the challenging conversation. So um, it doesn't matter who you are, it's natural <laughs> that we want to avoid awkwardness and it's natural that we want to avoid um, what feels uncomfortable so I get it however the it's and it becomes even more awkward to um, then do what I'm going to suggest but what it does is when you do this part, which I will explain in a moment, but when you do this, I want you to feel into the space that comes after because that is where the magic is. So instead of saying, oh, it's fine, it's all right, or oh, don't worry about it, even though they should, you know, concern themselves with it, consider saying something like, 
Thank you. I appreciate your apology. And that may be enough. That may be all that you need to say in order to acknowledge the apology, receive the apology, but still stay in your power, whether it's about boundaries that have been crossed, still stay in your power of these boundaries that are still solid. And it doesn't mean that you're trying to keep other people out. It just means that you're saying, hey, this is what I will accept and this is what I won't accept. And thank you for acknowledging that and for being on board with that in this moment. Um, so saying thank you for an apology, saying I appreciate the apology, um, can feel awkward because a lot of us, generally speaking, will try to make the other person feel more comfortable. Um, and that's where we can get stuck into in the, the trap of going, oh, it's okay. Oh, it's fine. Oh, how do I make this person feel better? And how do I make this go away? Um, so it can feel weird because you're not sitting there comforting the person apologizing, uh, which can be, if you're anything like me at least, it can be your tendency to do so sometimes, or maybe inbuilt, like habitual tendency that you might be working through or you might have worked through. Um, but when you say, thank you, I appreciate you apologizing, and breathe, there is a space there. And what happens in that space is it's kind of like an opening up between the two of you. There's a space. And when we create space between our reaction and our response, that's where magic happens. It can land with both of you. Now, obviously it depends on, or not obviously, but of course it depends on the intention of the person apologizing, whether they're apologizing to hear you say that it's okay or to make you feel bad or whatever, or if they're apologizing for the pure intention of it. So again, we're assuming that they've apologized um, from the right place in the right way or in the most effective way. Um, there is a space there. And that space is kind of beautiful because it is this comfort where, in my experience at least, no one feels like they need to fill in this space to try and keep talking. But that space is also an invitation to learn a little more about each other. So sometimes that space is an invitation for the person apologizing to explain, um, not as an excuse and not as a reason for their poor behavior, but explain what's going on for them that led to that behavior, which is beautiful insight for them to have for themselves, but also insight for you to have if you have some kind of ongoing relationship with this person. So they get to sort of choose whether they step into the space and say, yeah, I learned this about myself when I reacted that way. And how much more understanding and empathy would that build between you two just by having that space? Um, the space also allows you as the apology, as the person receiving the apology, um, the, the beauty of kind of standing strong in what your boundaries are, because so often our boundaries falter, um, in our attempt to make other people feel comfortable or more comfortable. So you get to experience in that space, you get to experience that, huh, yeah, I can stand strong and still be soft and loving and kind with this other person but I'm, I'm solid in me, which is amazing and awesome. So there is a lot of beauty in that space. So when it comes to apologies, there are always two sides to it. I have definitely covered the um, how to apologize, but I will probably keep talking about it um, in some way or another. But there is also this element of how to receive an apology because how you receive it also plays an important role into what happens next or the quality of what happens next as well, which again is super important and you get to play a role in that because you were a part of it. Um, even if you didn't, you weren't the one doing the quote unquote wrong thing. 